Welcome to Right on Track, a songwriting podcast. Thanks to Tone for tuning in. I'm Demi Michelle Schwartz, and I'm thrilled you're joining me on my songwriting journey. So kick back and relax, don't fall flat, and remember, stay right on track. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Right on Track. Joining me on the show today is a returning guest. She is fabulous. She is one of my songwriter friends. Please welcome back to Right on Track, Amber Nadine. Hey, Amber. Hey, Demi. How are you? I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to have you back on the show. Today, we're going to be covering the roller coaster ride that comes along with being a songwriter and life in general. And I'm really excited to get into that. But first, what have you been up to since you've been on last? It's been a while. So how have things been for you? Um... Absolutely incredible. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know, I am constantly astounded by the amazing people that God is like continuously putting in my life. And um, I'm so grateful because there is so much growth. I'm so excited. Uh, There's a lot of things that I want to tell you about that's coming that I can't. um, (laughs) But there's also just like a lot of moments that have been great. I started working with a friend of mine recently. Um, His name is Corey Rosen. He's a phenomenal um, producer, track builder, um, just all around amazing person. And um, I'm very grateful that we've been starting to make music together. So that's been awesome. Um, I'm working on... The, having a band put together. Actually, we, um, we're we going to be having our first show soon. So it, it's just a lot of blessings are being um, brought to me and a lot of open doors. And I'm very grateful. I'm so happy for you. And it sounds like things have been going good. You've had some great high moments along the way. And your current single we'll talk about later kind of touches on more the lower moments too that we all experience. So we'll touch on that as well. And also your experience working on the production for that track because it is fantastic again I love it so much (laughs) thank you that's so nice of you (laughs) yeah for sure so let's dive into our chat and we have a quote for this episode by Winston Churchill so can you read that absolutely success is not final failure is not fatal it is the courage to continue that counts so what does this mean to you I love this quote because it's speaking directly to everything that I face daily. I feel like these little successes that I've been having here and there, um, it's so easy for me to be like, okay, this is great, but now on to the next thing. And I have to work really hard to focus on just appreciating the moment and the joy of that. So that first sentence, success is not final, um, is so easy for me to just be like, yep, it's not final. Okay. I got to keep going. But I don't know. It's just so, I want to be able to appreciate every little moment. So then like the failure is not fatal part really speaks to me because there are so many times where I feel like I've failed and it happens pretty much daily along with the success part. So it's kind of like a constant emotional roller coaster of um, not being content. And I feel like I just have to focus more on being content with each little thing that happens. So um, because it is the courage to continue that counts. That's something that I keep striving for and I'm never going to stop. I can't stop. Um, I, I, I've really been vibing lately with um, Taylor Swift's song. I can do it with a broken heart. That song was just like everything for me because even though you're going through moments where that aren't necessarily good, um, if you love something enough and you love what you're doing, 
you can still do it even though you feel like you can't. Yeah, so many great thoughts there. I really like this quote too. I think just breaking it down like you did with the success as in final, I think that sometimes whenever I'm having successes back to back to back and there's like hardly any low moments, like I'm on such a high, like on top of the world, it kind of comes along with this fear which is crazy to say but it's like this fear like when is this going to end and when am I going to drop again because it always happens I think like that's the thing too moving on to the uh, failure isn't fatal like whenever we're in these low moments and whether they're personal or professional like things are just like really really low you're down in the valley not up on the hill and it's just like all like bad you can think things will never get better but they always do there are these ups and downs of life all the time and it's crazy because there's like these fears both ways like when you're in the success point it's like when is this gonna end and it's like that unknown fear of when it's gonna get worse again and then when you're in the worst part it's like the fear of how long is this gonna last but I totally agree with what you were saying about enjoying the successes and the good moments along the way that's something I've been consciously aware of too and I actually even like mentioned that in a song sort of that it's going to be on my album. The song is called Future of Yesterday. And it's basically talking about how um, there are many moments, especially in my recent past, where I was like looking forward to something. And then whenever I was experiencing it, I wasn't fully present to the point when it was over. I looked back and was like, man like I've been wishing for that and now it's over and I didn't stop to enjoy it so now that's my future of yesterday and there is a lyric in the song that says um I never stopped to smell the roses you know like I would always keep going and going and going and I think it's really important as artists and just like in life in general to appreciate these moments because they are really special and sometimes they do come rare when things are difficult and so I think recognizing those successes those high moments will really bring a sparkle to our lives and remind us that even when things are difficult we will have those good moments again and the courage to keep going 100% sure I think like you whenever you're in these spaces as an artist and just a person again in life going through all the things you have the courage to keep going you have to have that courage to keep going because that's the drive if you have a dream you don't know what's coming it's the unknown and you need to be fearless and push through all the ups and all the downs and continue to chase that dream because I think the roller coaster of life is, it can be difficult at times, but it's the beauty of life too. If everything were perfect all the time, the good things wouldn't matter. And so I think it's just that courage to continue and to appreciate everything and learn from the hard times and celebrate the good ones. Wow. I, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah. And, and and I gotta say, you just said that, that lyric, I'd never stopped to smell the roses. You made me tear up. I'm like, that is I, so <laughs> relatable. And it's so true. Like, um, there have been moments where I've been like nominated for an award and, um, it's just like in, in the moment I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm nominated. Cool. And I'm like, wait, no, hold on a second. Pull back. (laughs) Like that is awesome. Get excited about this because this doesn't happen to everybody and it's an honor. And um, I think it's just so easy as artists to be like looking for the next thing, looking for the next thing. And you just, you said it perfectly. So yeah. Yeah, Yeah, no. And I completely agree with the whole thing of when you've been doing something for a while, things happen a lot, like airplay and award nominations and interviews. But it's really important to remember that once upon a time, like we didn't have any of that stuff. It mm-hmm. was like pulling teeth to even get somebody to respond to an email. I got ghosted at the beginning. I got so many no's at the beginning, like never even thought that I would get interviewed or win an award or whatever. And so I think that it's the point of remembering where you came from and your roots too. Like 
your passion for this and just appreciating every little opportunity. If you've been nominated for 10 awards, fantastic, but the 10th one is just as special as the first time. So I think remembering that too, and that's definitely something that I, I try to do often as well, like really stop whenever somebody plays my song and I see like a notification, always thank them and try to tune in, especially when I can and just see it like the first time because for some people featuring us it is the first time it can be a first time being nominated for a certain award show or it could be a first time being interviewed or featured on a certain platform and so even though we have those people that have been there from the beginning that we constantly thank for including us and that we have a connection with it is really important to treat the new ones as they are your first because that you are on their platform or in their community and I think it's really great just to show appreciation overall. Absolutely. I totally agree. Um, and, you know, I am so grateful for everybody that has, like, listened to my music or replied to an email or just, you know, in general has been kind to me. It's it's a, a blessing that I never fully expected. I knew that, like, I dreamed of it, but it, it wasn't something that I I ever thought was possible being where I'm at now. And um, I know that I just have the desire and the drive to keep moving forward. So that's all I'm going to keep doing. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it is important, like you said, to just have that drive, keep moving forward, but still stop and appreciate along the way and don't move too quickly where it turns into a blur and you're like oh my goodness I did all these things but I hardly have memories of them because I was always looking ahead and I like totally am experiencing similar things in my other creative endeavor with the publishing because I am currently on submission which means my agent started sending my book to editors at publishing houses and even a year ago, like, I didn't even have an agent yet. I didn't even think I would even get to the point of having my agent send my book out to publishing houses. And so it was crazy because, like, whenever my agent emailed me, like, we're on submission, congratulations, I had another book I had started working on. Um, and I was really eager to start revising it, but I didn't want to start revising that one until this one was out of my hands. And I remember emailing her like, yay, I'm really excited to dive back into this other book. And she literally said, like, don't burn yourself out. Just stop. Just take a break for a couple of weeks and celebrate what you just accomplished. And it clicked in my brain like, yeah, she's right. Like I, I need to like stop and celebrate like what I just accomplished instead of just moving on to the next thing like it was nothing. And so I feel like a lot of creative people, no matter what avenue, we all kind of go through those things and in life in general too, just personal things. I think it's really important to appreciate those things and recognize how far you've come in whatever area of growth you experienced. I agree. And that's awesome. I'm so happy Thank for you. you. Yeah, like you have, not only do you have an agent, but you have a supportive agent. I think that that's so important that you have someone who's not like trying to work you to the bone, but also trying to like help you, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's she's so, fantastic, yeah. That's so rare and I love it, yeah, so. Yeah, for sure. So talking more about the roller coaster of the unexpected nature of these highs and lows as we we're chasing our dreams and going through life do you have any tips to kind of manage the shifts because there are some times where it happens so quickly like one day you're on a high and then the next day you're like crying your eyes out and it's just very overwhelming at times so do you have any advice for ways of managing the emotional roller coaster um <laughs> So for me, what um, I know works for me, I'm sure that it's different for everybody, but for me as an artist, I feel like um, when I'm on those lows, like full disclosure, I'm a hot mess right now. And um, I have no problems admitting that, but I've also been writing some of my best work because of it. So um, I think for me, using my creativity to um, sift through the bad and find the good in it um, has really been a 
very helpful outlet for me. Um, so, and then when I'm on the high and, um, you know, I'm loving life and living life, I make sure to try and write about those two because um, I think it's important to make sure that you document your journey and um, remember how you felt during all different parts of the highs and the lows. I love that so much. And I was going to say a similar thing and that I think as creative people, it's natural for us to channel our emotions through our art and as songwriters, as through our music. And I think what's so amazing is that when we write songs, when we are in such low places and dark places in our lives, those can turn into fantastic moments. Like my album, It Is What It Is, I wrote that when I was in a very toxic like friendship situation. I was dealing with a lot of like negative energy and manipulation to the point where like I didn't know who I was anymore I was lacking all these boundaries for myself and I would just turn into and turning into a version of myself I didn't like and my mental health was really suffering and like I just had to write that album to just like cope with stuff and heal from stuff and then that album won my first music award for me so that was a total high and I wouldn't have gotten that if I hadn't turned to my art when I was feeling all those things and so I think that it's a beautiful thing as songwriters when we're able to turn our songs into these moments for ourselves whether it's just playing it at a show and seeing somebody crying in the audience because they felt it like you made somebody feel something through your music it doesn't always have to be this large-scale thing like an award or something it's the little things that always matter too and so I think also when you're feeling those things recognizing that you're not alone first of all and also finding ways of getting that out of your system and then moving on but keeping that I like what you said about documenting it I think that's exactly right I think that Looking back at my whole discography, it's basically a musical representation of my life since like 2019. And it's really cool to look back and see like where I was in certain parts and remembering the good and the bad and having this sonic palette of my life to kind of see like how I've been and what I've done and how I felt and to continue to write songs when we're feeling all the different feelings to have that to look back on from years to years to come as well. Yeah, no, definitely. And, um, you, you know, it really helps me because I find that I tend to have a, um, I, I don't want to call it a forgetful brain because I, I, I'm not super forgetful. It's just, I feel like it's a lot easier to remember the good than it, to the, remember the bad than it is to remember the good. Um, so for me, I feel like if I document the good, it helps me look back and be like, well, remember this situation isn't all that bad, you know, because you, you, you wrote this. So that was good. So <laughs> jokingly, jokingly, I can say that um, it, it happens a lot with me and my boyfriend, like when we're in like a, a little spat about something and uh, he frustrates me. I can go back and listen to a happy song that I wrote about him and be like, yeah, yeah, I still love him, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> also about the whole documenting the good, I do that on my website. I do monthly wrap-up blogs where I literally share all the highlights from the month. And I started this, I want to say like February or March 2021. I think it's when I started it and I've done it every single month since. And that has been really good for me because number one, it's literally a public diary of sorts of like everything I'm doing for people to look at. But more than that, I'm able to look back and see all the fun things I've done, all the highlights I've had, and also the progression of when I started doing those blogs to now. And even more than that, I think I love doing this so much because there are some months that I literally think 
I was at a total standstill and didn't do anything and I was just at a really low point. But every single month I've had multiple things to write about. And so that just reminded me that even when we feel like we are in a sea of darkness and sadness and nothing is going well, there will always be good things mixed in there, no matter how small. And forcing myself to write those blogs every month, even during months that I didn't feel like I did much, it's reminding me that there are positives, even though things can feel super negative a lot. And so that's something that I personally like to do. That's so good. That's a great way to document everything. Um, I I need to learn from you. <laughs> 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 yeah no it's been really fun and it's also been just a fun thing for me to do because again back to something we were talking about earlier about moving quickly through things that literally forces me to sit down each month and go what did I do this month that's worth celebrating and forcing right. myself to write about it and so that has made me really stop and reflect too which has been good that's awesome yeah. So cool. <laughs> so I would love for you to share a little about your current single. So if you can share what it's called and the inspiration behind it and how it kind of ties into our chat today. Yeah. Um, so my song Breakdown in the Shower is available on all streaming platforms. So please go listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's probably some of my most vulnerable work so far and most raw writing. Um, this was a song that I wrote back in 2019 and 2019 was just, I think my most depressed year. Um, there was someone that I was truly in love with that uh, did not love me back. And um, I spent a lot of time being this person's friend. And then um, when they started to see somebody, I was just like, okay, I, I got to give up. I can't be their friend anymore. And um, that's where this song came from was just, I, I was haunted by the, the idea of what we could be um, because we never got the opportunity to even try. And um, for a good solid five months after we stopped talking, it was just pure, pure breakdown. Like every day I would cry in the shower. I would cry in the car on my way to work. I would cry in the cubicle. I would cry on my way home from work. And then I would go to bed and wake up the next morning and do it all again. Um, so... The, the song is really just kind of explaining the raw emotion in situations like that and um, how, you know, difficult it is to go through that sort of thing. Super relatable. Love this song. Thank you for opening up about all of that. And I just was curious because you wrote this like five years ago. How was it like for you to resurface all of this to release it this year? Um, honestly, it's been a little terrifying, but also so freeing. I always feel like when I write something, it's not, um, I'm not officially through the emotion or over it until it has been released. It's like a final, um, like the acceptance version of grief is releasing the song um, because it, it's just this whole long process for me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> no, I love that so much. And it's really relatable too. I completely agree that it's kind of funny because people can think that releasing the song is the scariest part. And you know what? It, it can be because especially if you have a very vulnerable song, you want it to be received well. And just in general, we want people to embrace our music. But at the same time, it's like, I don't need to hide this anymore. It's like, let anybody who wants to hear this, hear it and connect to it. And it's not, you're not hiding anymore. It's out. And it is freeing. And I felt that way with several of my songs. 
And also, too, it's been a little interesting because with some of my, like, most vulnerable songs, even if I recorded them, like, a month or so or even years later after writing them, I still, like, always, whenever I'm working on a song like that, when I'm in the studio, it comes back and sometimes it's difficult to even, like, sing the songs because I'm in this headspace again and sometimes we need to allow those emotions to come back in order to deliver an authentic performance recording and so I don't push them away but it's also not the greatest to feel that again but after the songs out I found like when I perform those songs live it doesn't hurt as much because it's not like it's this personal thing I'm clutch into my chest anymore like I'm just the song's out there and people know it and I'm playing it and it's more of a situation where I'm seeing it as this is a way to not only share part of my life but also to give a song to somebody else who may need it and to connect with people through the universal language of music or whatnot so it's an interesting roller coaster ride of emotions as well that we deal with as songwriters through the writing and recording and releasing yeah I, I find that it's a freedom that I never knew that I needed when I release it. And like the the best part is when you have a song that you are like, oh, I can't release this because this person is still in my life and it's going to hurt them. And then you're like, you finally get to a point where you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It's like so such a a beautiful moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah, uh, I, I think that that was my problem for a while because this person was still in my life and I wasn't ready to release it because I didn't want to hurt them. But at the same time I was like, you know what, they already hurt me. Like, why can't I <laughs> Why can't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our music gives us such control, I think. And I've definitely had songs. Like, I've released songs about people who they have zero clues about them. And I still talk to them. And I maybe still be, like, you know, friends with them or whatever. But that song is 100% about them at a point where they were, like, mean to me or hurt me in some way. But I'm a very forgiving person. And I don't like to cut people out of my life unless I absolutely have to. But there are definitely songs that I've released about people who I'm, like, close friends with who just pissed me off for a period of time. And you inspired a song. So thanks. <laughs> It happens, you know, you're like, yeah. you, you decide that you're going to be mean and like, <laughs> take my sandwich. I'm going to write a song about you. <laughs> Sorry. And it's their, it's their fault for, uh, they should know the consequences of being in Absolutely. a songwriter's life. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, <laughs> but no, I, going back to the performing it live thing, um, I agree with you. I smile now when I perform Breakdown in the Shower Life because it's so fun for me knowing that I created this and that people think that it's good and they enjoy listening to it and they relate to it. And that makes me happy. I'm like, this is a sad song and I should be sad while I'm playing it, but I can't be because I'm I'm happy that everybody is receiving it so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. It's definitely a roller coaster ride of the life of a songwriter it's a whole thing all the time and it was awesome chatting with you about this topic we are coming to the end of our chat which is ridiculous because time flew as always (laughs) but just to wrap up what are some final thoughts you would like to share about dealing with the highs and lows of life in general or specifically with songwriting if you are a songwriter never be afraid to be completely open and honest um in your work just it's going to be so much better for you and so much more therapeutic if you are not an artist and you are just a fan of music never be afraid to jot down your feelings or, or um you know do whatever is most therapeutic for you to get them out um as long as you're not hurting somebody else it's it's important that you work through them so thank you for listening. And I hope that we helped you in some way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and Amber, it was a total joy having you back on the show. Can you please share with everybody where they can listen to your music and find you online? 
Yes, thank you so much for having me. It was a joy being back on your show. Um, yes, so you can find me at ambernadine.com or you can uh, follow me on Facebook or Instagram. My username is ambernadine1. Uh, please feel free to send me a direct message. I'd love to chat with you. Perfect. Well, Amber, thank you so much for joining me. Of course. It was, it was a so joy. Fun. Yes, it totally was. And listeners, I hope you enjoyed this chat with Amber all about the roller coaster ride of being a songwriter. And of course, until next time, stay, stay right, right on, on track. track.